So if you're a part of my Discord server, uh, then you'll probably already be aware that I got really excited this morning when I got a notification from Curtis Smith letting me know that not only is the Unreal Engine 5.3 roadmap available, but there are some really awesome new audio features. So if we jump over to the Unreal Engine roadmap, uh, while there are a lot of really cool things in other areas, if we scroll down to the audio section, the first thing that you notice is probably also the first thing that I noticed, MetaSound Output Watching. This is a feature that I have been wanting in the engine since 5.0 early access came out. And it's finally coming and I couldn't be more excited for it. Now to summarize, basically what this means is we're going to be able to send data from our meta sounds back into our blueprints and drive in-game actions using that information in real time. But why sit around staring at a card on a web page when we can get our hands on it right now? But before we jump in and get our hands on the meta sound output watching, there is one thing that I want to make very clear. The version of the engine that I'm going to be using is the 5.3 development build. Uh, I had to go to GitHub, build it from source. So if you're at, at the time of recording this video, if you're going into your Epic Games launcher and not seeing 5.3, that's because it's not out yet. Uh, I don't have a release date for that, but I do know that the developers are working very hard to get everything ready and packaged for that public release. So what that means is, please take anything that you see in this video or hear in this video with a grain of salt. Uh, being still in development means that there's potential for changes, features to get added, removed, pushed back to later versions. And so that is also why this is not a tutorial. Uh, we're just gonna kind of get our hands on it and play with it. Um, just because I don't wanna give you guys a tutorial for something and then just have it be obsolete uh, the day that it's released. So with all that being said, let's jump into the engine. And uh, I've just got a first person template loaded up here that I've cleared everything out of. And uh, you'll see these five pillars standing here because, you know, I get MetaSound output analyzing and the first thing I have to do is build an, an audio analyzer. So uh, in terms of the MetaSound, your MetaSound process is still going to be pretty much the same. Uh, the only thing is you may have to do a little bit on the back end in terms of creating custom outputs to do whatever it is you want it to do inside your level blueprint. So I've got five pillars. And so what I did was I took this, I used a band splitter to split out different frequencies, uh, adjusted the crossover points a little bit, and we're just using an envelope follower now to go to these custom outputs. Inside our level blueprint, um, this is a really janky setup that I just kind of threw together uh, just to see if I can get it to work. Um, there may be a more efficient way to do what it is that I'm trying to do here, but just for the sake of, of showing you guys, this, <laughs> this is the setup. So we've got our audio component here that uh, is adding our meta sound. Uh, if I open up the details panel, you can see I've got the meta sound in here. I just called it music just for the hell of it. And we also now have this meta sound output subsystem. This node probably looks pretty similar to the soundscape subsystem uh, that you've seen in the current release. But from our MetaSound output subsystem, we now have this node to watch our outputs. Just like we do with our parameters, um, when we're inputting custom parameters into MetaSounds, we do have to make sure that the, the name is specific to what we have as our outputs. And from there, we're gonna be using this on output value change to drive these custom events. Now I've got it so that it just uh, basically excites the, the mesh on the Z axis 
and changes the relative scale. And uh, so, like I said, I'm not gonna go through this in detail. This isn't a tutorial. I just wanted to show you my giant spaghetti monster of a mess. And if we move this back out of the way, we can see this in action. It's just so beautiful. And so while I built an audio visualizer just to kind of show you, the possibilities with this are endless, really. Uh, anything from like BPM syncing events, um, having trigger points within a song based on like cue points and things like that. Uh, you can use thresholds. So if like the amplitude of your audio surpasses a certain threshold, you can trigger an in-game event. There's just so many things that you can do with this. Uh, the audio visualizer was really just the simplest thing that I could create to show you guys uh, that it's working. Now, if we hop back over to the meta sound, you may have noticed down here, I also have a sine wave player going on. So we can actually take this and we'll run that out to our outputs. And uh, just going to go ahead and move these out of the way just so you can see that they are no longer connected. And I will preemptively apologize. Uh, this example is going to be rather annoying. Um, but basically, I have our sine wave player set up here with an LFO to automatically adjust the frequency. And so we've got a frequency of 0.15 minimum value of 40, maximum value of 1,000 hertz that we're going to send to our frequency of our sine wave player. And if we save that and move it out of the way, I didn't make any other changes other than swapping out an actual music file for a sine wave generator. And because we already have everything set up, this just works. Like I said, that, that test is really annoying, um, but I really just wanted to show you how easily you can jump in and start changing things and, and it still just works. That's the glory of it. It just works. It was super simple. Um, you know, I do like to pride myself on being able to figure out software fairly quickly, but in all honesty, just the little picture that was above the note card was enough to get me going, and everything else from there was really, really intuitive. So I know that this was a rather short video. Again, I, I'm just really excited for this to be in the next iteration of Unreal Engine, and I wanted to share that excitement with you guys. And so if you do want to be a part of the Sound Effects Guy Discord server, you will find a link in the description below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. Until next time.